and Sister Wilson, inshallah, she will be presenting for us about uh, Burundi, one of the African countries uh, with whom we share a uh, few information and uh, inshallah, she will present After witnessing all these inspiring revolutions, um, I'm going to take you away from the Arab world and we're going to go to another part of the world that we tend to forget often. Uh, we're going to look at what internal fighting for power can do to a country and what human suffering can result as, as a result of this fighting. So the presentation is about Burundi and a lesson to learn from the conflict in Burundi. How many people here you know about Burundi? Where is it? Where in Africa? Um, south to Sudan. So Burundi is a very small um, country. You can see here, it's like number three. Very, very small. Uh, close to uh, Tanzania, Kenya, and the Congo. And um, we're going to take a closer look. It's 8.6 people who live in Burundi. Million. I'm sorry, 8.6 <laughs> million people <laughs> who live in Burundi. <laughs> and um, there are mainly three ethnic groups. There's the Hutu, the Tutsi, and the Twa. And the religious uh, groups, there's Christians and uh, Muslims. 80% Christians, and there's 5% uh, Muslims. For the ethnic groups, the majority uh, is Hutu. That's very important to keep in mind for the rest of the presentation. And Tutsi are a minority, 14%. And the Twa are the indigenous people, and they're 1%. So the official languages in Burundi are uh, Turundi, which is the uh, native language for all three ethnic groups, and um, French. Just to let you know, the life expectancy in Burundi is 51 years old. So now we're, I'm going to look at the brief history of Burundi, what happened in that country in terms of oppression, human rights violations, and uh, where we are at right now. So in 1916, under the rule of King Albert I from Belgium, um, Belgium occupies the territory of Burundi and Rwanda, and that area is known at the time as Rwanda, Burundi, it's one territory. Now, Belgium, what they uh, did is that they administered the territory by, by empowering the Tutsi. So they took the, the minority group and they gave them the wealth, the power, and the status, and they let them govern over that territory. And the majority, who are the Hutu, they were uh, left aside, and they felt like they were treated like peasants. So um, they were excluded from universities, from government jobs, and so on. In 1962, Burundi gets full independence from Belgium. That's supposed to be a happy event. But that's when the problems start, until today. So after that, there's years of fighting between the minority Tutsi in power and the majority Hutu who are left aside. In 1972, the Hutu um, want to uprise, so they try to uprise, uh, like a revolution, but it is a failed uprising, and the Tutsi army kills about 200,000 Hutus in that year. And hundreds of thousands of civilians uh, leave the country and they go to Tanzania, Rwanda, and Congo. So that's 1972. A few years later, 1988, another 150 people, 150,000 people uh, get killed and an unrest between the Hutu and the Tutsi. So we see that there's always a tendency be uh, fighting between the Tutsi and the, and the Hutu over government power. This is a very important tier in the history of, uh, of Burundi. It's a turning point. Young humanity. Yes. 
1993, there's the first presidential election. So uh, there's a Hutu uh, politician who wins the election. His name is Melchior Ndadaye. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. So he, he becomes the president of Burundi. But the Tutsi minority are not happy, and the Tutsi militants kill him. The Tutsi have always been in power, and they had the government positions, and this is one of the first times that the Hutu take over. Um, and this marks the beginning of civil war in Burundi. The civil war lasts for 13 years. During those 13 years, 300,000 people were killed during the war. There were a lot of human rights violations. Uh, there were mass killings of civilians, innocent people who had nothing to do with the violence or with the uprising and the war. Innocent people, women, men, children. Um, there was a very um, uh, problematic issue was the, um, the rebels were recruiting children as soldiers. Both sides, the Tutsi and the Hutu, both recruited children um, as soldiers. They would go into homes and just snatch kids take them with them, give them the weapons, and let them fight, fight, or serve them. And there was a lot of rape. Uh, women and girls were victim of rape during that war. And that was a common tactic by the rebels to disgrace the other group. So they would do it to each other to disgrace each other. While uh, as a result of the civil war, war uh, hundreds of thousands of people fled the country uh, more than before. And at the same time that this is happening in Burundi, the neighbors in Rwanda uh, were also having some uh, unrest. If, I'm sure you've heard about the Rwanda genocide. Okay, so uh, the Rwanda is very similar to Burundi. It has a Tutsi minority and a Hutu majority. And there was also uh, fighting between them. And during that uh, genocide, there were between 500,000 people and 1 million who were killed during that uh, 1994 genocide. Um, after this, after the, uh, during the civil war, after this happened in 2006, the civil war in Burundi officially ends, but the fighting still continues because not all rebel groups stop fighting. Some uh, rebel groups disarmed and they joined the political process. So the people who were fighting before are now part of the political process. They disarmed and joined the uh, political process. In 2010, uh, there was the first presidential election since 1993. This is the first step to democracy. And there was a Hutu leader who won the election. That was the beginning of a new era for Burundi. Now, after the war, uh, Burundi is slowly emerging from a civil war. The refugees are coming back home. But, as in every country, after a war, there's always challenges. There's poverty. Uh, Burundi is one of the poorest countries in the world. I've seen uh, reports saying that it's the third poorest country in the world. The economy is completely collapsed, and it depends heavily on foreign aid. Human rights violations are still occurring. Uh, even though the war is over, there's still killings, arbitrary detention. Uh, the opposition is often uh, harassed and discriminated. Uh, child soldiers is a very uh, problematic issue in Burundi because the children who were fighting in the war are now without anyone to uh, help them integrate society. Their parents often have died or they don't know where their parents are. So there has the, they have, there's an issue with the uh, former child soldiers. And there's always the problem of political rights. There's always problems between the government and the opposition and the internal fighting to uh, get power. Now, in theory, Burundi uh, is potentially self-sufficient in food production. But in reality, civil war, overpopulation, and soil erosion have made that impossible. So all this talk about Tutsi, Hutu, and the fighting, it's important to know who are the Tutsi, the Hutu. What's the difference between them? Can anyone guess? Two brothers. Two what? 
They were brothers and each one has his own you know, family and they... Very, very close. There's actually no significant difference between them. What happened? They have the same language, same culture, and they have similar DNA. There's one theory that says um, what happened was that during, uh, during uh, when Belgium came to take over the territory, <coughs> they wanted to identify people in Rwanda and Burundi according to a simple classification. So anyone who owned 10 cows and more or had a long nose was classified as Tutsi. And anyone else was classified as Hutu. And they were mostly people who were working in agriculture. So Belgium made this classification to make it simple for uh, the uh, empire, uh, the uh, Belgium uh, king, to divide the country. And um, so th the Tutsi, they were the link between Belgium and Burundi. They were the ones in power. So it was kind of like an arbitrary classification. Belgium thought that the Tutsi had some European physical features, like the thin, long nose, so they were superior. And they put them in control. Um, so the Belgium gave control over the government and military to Tutsi, and the Tutsi and the Hutu were left aside. The lesson to learn from uh, the uh, history and the conflict in Burundi is that the difference between the Tutsi and Hutu is an illusion. It's created by a foreign power. That theory is a very dominant theory right now uh, in Burundian history. So um, basically all this fight fighting was based on something that was made up by another power. Now we're going to be watching a video about Burundi after the war and the ethnic tension <coughs> between the Hutu and the Tutsi after the civil war ended. Thank you.